it. I got it. The official Gage Agnew hotline for the YouTube stuff. How may I help you? Hey Gage, it's Vinny. Are you still gonna help me move on Saturday? Oh, totally. I'm just gonna... Oh, wait, hold on. I got another call. The official Gage Agnew hotline... Hey Gage, I was hoping for some help with the script I'm writing. I want to make it like something no one's ever seen before. Ah, well, I would say nothing is ever truly original, but I would point you in the direction of the Venture Brothers. Hey, Gage, if you need me to call back some other time... Really? I don't know that I've ever heard of that. Oh, you'd love it! It's a mix of old and new culture to produce something really fresh. You're doing another YouTube intro, aren't you? Well, how do I know it's for me? Look, I already put a deposit down on this place. Well, I'll tell you all about it. Swim? Vinny? Oh, so now you, now you can hear me. I'm going to tell you all about the Adventure Brothers! Warning! Mild spoilers for the Venture Brothers up ahead. If you want to go in the show with a super fresh mind, uh, I would just put this on mute, let it play in the background. I, I need the views. But... If you're otherwise ready to learn about the Venture Brothers, in 1996, Yahoo! the animated Tick series was wrapping up, leaving its writers to pursue other projects. One of these writers, Christopher McCulloch, who was a Tick comic book writer and a staff writer on the show, started development on an idea of this boy adventure turned super scientist and his two Hardy Boy S sons. This ultimately turned into the Venture Brothers. But he wanted to make it a comic book initially, but he found the lore too deep for just one comic. So he started pitching it around as an animated adult series. And he was ultimately surprised when uh, Cartoon Network decided to pick it up because their programming was primarily aimed at children since its inception in 1992. The pilot aired in February 16th, 2003, and the first season was officially underway in August 7th, 2004. I personally heard about the show through my cousin at the local community pool. He said, hey, there's this cool new light show that makes fun of the Fantastic Four. You should check it out. Check it out. And I didn't because I didn't have cable, but later he loaned me the DVDs. So he was nice enough to do that. And uh, I don't want to brag, but our TV had both a built-in DVD player and a VHS player. So uh, yeah, we're the cool house on the block. Though you did have to get off the phone if you wanted to use the internet. This is also my first memory of understanding parody because I knew who the Fantastic Four were and I understood their powers. So the Venture Brothers instantly reeled me in with that familiarity. And I found out later that all of the characters, or at least most of them, met in college, much like how Reed Richards met Dr. Doom, as he recalled in Fantastic Four, issue number five. One of my favorite aspects of the show is the cast. Now, the cast, about two-thirds of them, are voiced by the creators, Doc Hammer and Christopher McCulloch, who also goes by Jackson Public when he's not voice acting. And by the way, Doc Hammer was also a painter and a musician before he was a co-creator on the show. These guys also play a lot of duos on the show, such as Billy Quizboy and Pete White, uh, Watch and Ward, Dr. And Mrs. The Monarch, and The Monarch, Henchman 21 and 24, and Kevin and Tim Tom. Uh, McCulloch also plays one of the titular Venture Brothers, Hank Venture, and Michael Sinter Nicholas plays Dean Venture, and their father is played by James Urbaniak, who was probably best known for playing Henry Fool, but now he plays Dr. Thaddeus Venture. But Public discovered him through a comedy sketch where he played Samuel Beckett in a uh, discussion between Mickey Mouse and Samuel Beckett. And Patrick Warburton was sort of a natural fit because Public worked with him previously on the 2001 live action, The Tick. And they had some wonderful guest stars along the way, such as Stephen Colbert, Bill Hader, H. John Benjamin, Kate McKinnon, Nathan Fillion, Seth Green, Paige Brewster, Hal Lublin, Clancy Brown, Christine Milati, and that guy from Fargo. No, not Steve Buscemi. No, not William H. Macy. No, not Peter Stormare. No, not John Carroll Lynch. No, I'm talking about Steve Park. You know, Steve Park, who played Mike Yanagita. Uh, that guy Margie had lunch with in Minneapolis. Gosh darn, am I the only one that watches cinema around here? Margie Olmstead? Yeah? Who's this? This is Mike Yanagita. You 
Mike Yanagita? Yeah. Alright, so no one knows who Mike Yanagita is, because he's mentioned three times in the whole movie of Fargo. But Doc Hammer describes Mike Yanagita as a side note to the larger story of Fargo. And that's sort of what Venture Brothers is. Venture Brothers is sort of a side note to what would be the main adventures of a typical Hanna-Barbera action show from the 60s. So Hank and Dean are the Venture Brothers, but the show isn't really about them. It's more about Doc Rusty Venture. See, Doc was one of these boy adventurers, much like Johnny Quest, and he was dragged around the globe by Team Venture and his father, Jonas Venture, who's this Doc Savage-esque type super scientist. And all these adventures really mess him up in the head, so he turns out to be this disaster of a human being. And he tries to become a super scientist himself, but he's not very good at it. Bad robot. Bad helper. We don't do that. We do not eat test tubes. But this puts a huge target on his back for him and the boys. And so he has to get a bodyguard himself because he's endangering himself and his children. So meet Brock Sampson. He is way too overqualified to guard the Ventures, but I understand the need for a bodyguard. I have mine around at all times. Any looming threats today, Mr. Bodyguard? Nah. Well, uh, you don't seem very attentive. I am. Well, what if a supervillain bursts in? If a supervillain bursts into your studio apartment, I'll get right on that. And speaking of supervillains, the world of the Venture Brothers is chock Full of them. These villains are run by the Guild of Calamitous Intent, who's run by this floating head called the Sovereign. Some of these villains include Red Death, Phantom Limb, Baron Underbite, Sergeant Hatred, Dragoon, and Red Mantle, who I'm pretty sure is Buddy Holly. Now, Doc's primary arch is the Monarch, who's this Saturday morning cartoon villain who has the means to be as over the top as possible. So he's a lot of fun. The Monarch and his crew are the other half of this show. Now, originally Public and Hammer wanted a villain of the week situation, much like the original Johnny Quest. But as the show went on, the creators just kept getting drawn back to the mighty Monarch. The Monarch is just as much of a doofus as Dr. Venture, but in a weird way more successful at it. He's good at his job, he has a very good second in command, and he has the funds to pursue his dream, which is arching Dr. Venture. Speaking of supervillainy, I mentioned the Guild of Calamitous Intent. Well, there's also an agency for the good guys, sorry, protagonist agency. Now, these two forces are supposedly constantly at odds with each other. Battle between good and evil. Did you just say that? Are we using good guys and bad guys now? Yeah, let's stop dancing around and acting all politically correct. We're talking good guys and bad guys, and we all know it. That's how you see us bad guys? How dare you? That's because there are rules. And rules are what separates people from the animals. The boys from the men. The boys to men. The president from the secret president. And believe me, there's a big difference, you know? And I would be remiss if I didn't at least mention some of the supporting cast, such as Dr. Orpheus, Shoreleaf, Hunter Gathers, Jonas Jr., Pirate Captain, Action Man, Jefferson Twilight, Colonel Gentleman, Molotov Cocktees, Kano, The Alchemist, Billy Quizboy, Augustus St. Cloud, Pete White, Rose Whalen, and Fat Chance. Oh, there's also some lesser known uh, Star Wars characters in there too, such as Lobot and Neenum. <laughs> No one remembers Neem Num. Now you might be a little overwhelmed because there's a lot of characters for a show that's under 100 episodes. But fear not, you have a very loose reference of who these characters are through previously established characters such as Mr. Fantastic, Hunter S. Thompson, or James Bond. And you know that character, so you get a loose reference to who this character in the Venture Brothers is. And Public and Hammer expand out from there. There's a lot of characters you wouldn't expect to be where they are, such as 
you wouldn't expect a Frankenstein-esque monster to be the leader of a South American revolution. You wouldn't expect an all-knowing supernatural being to have the voice of Bob Belcher. And you certainly wouldn't expect to have your arch enemy's henchman be a force to be reckoned with. There's no such thing as a one-off character. All these characters have agencies and goals. It's a very Ben Edlin kind of concept. Uh, he's the creator of The Tick, by the way. Giving characters that you normally wouldn't expect to see in the spotlight their time to shine. Brief aside here, but I love Henchman 21's, aka Gary's, rise to prominence in the series. The creators say his rise kind of reflects that of nerd culture, which is true. Not a lot of people knew who Thanos was 10 years ago. Now everyone knows that purple man. A lot of people say that their favorite character is Brock, but for me, it's always been Gary. I relate to Gary. Probably because our names are close, like Gary Gage. It's like two letters away, but yeah, he's, he's cool. So what exactly makes the Venture Brothers special? Well, on the surface, not much. It's your typical 60s action cartoon with a twist of adult cynicism thrown in there, a la The Simpsons. But if you look under the hood, you'll see influences from pulp novels, Jack Kirby comics, pop music, and the art scene. It's sort of like that Stone Soup story where it starts off with a guy with hot water and a rock and he encourages everyone else to throw different ingredients in there and eventually comes out with something totally new. There's also some sort of uh, thing about sharing. Uh, that's neither what the Venture Brothers is about or this video, so uh, not important. You've probably heard the expression, originality is dead. And to an extent, that's true. Nothing is ever truly original, but that doesn't necessarily make it bad. In fact, if you're aware of common tropes and archetypes, this can lead a creator to lead his creation into paths once formally uncharted. It allows them to ask questions of characters that are typically glanced over. What would realistically happen to the boy adventure who is all grown up? What motivates the over-the-top villain and his conquest of hate? And what happens when your worst enemy is viewed as an infallible idol to the rest of the world? Venture Brothers was never really about action or adventure or comedy, though it does all of those things exceedingly well, but more about these characters and how they react to the world of super science around them. As a result, you get a lot of love and hate, failure, and success, and oh yeah, a lot of pop culture references. It even ends on the, like a Darkman note. Who knows Darkman except for me? I think Venture Brothers is special to me because of how niche and dense it is. I don't want to come off as selfish here, but in the internet age where Marvel and Star Wars are at the forefront of the cultural zeitgeist, it's nice to have something a little more underground. What other show has Grover Cleveland's Time Machine, The Nozzle, and Spanakopita? Spanakopita! I think that special feeling comes from Doc Hammer and Jackson Public working on this for about 20 years. They direct it, they write it, they voice it, they edit it. They do the whole shebang. It's great. And you can really tell that their passion and dedication really shines through. Venture Brothers ended on October 2018. That's 15 years on the air. Seasons take quite a while to produce, as Jackson Public states here. Here's why it takes so long. They're using a oh, There's only two of us, and so yeah. we write it all, and then I direct it, and it takes, I don't know, 11 months or something just to get it animated, and then you're editing it uh, a whole bit. I, I haven't had a weekend off in like a year and a half, man. <laughs> and so I can't... Uh, we can't really write while we're in production, and most shows have a writing team, and they're not the directors, and so, like, there's no overlap for us, other than just, like, brainstorming a little. Originally, Adult Swim renewed Venture Brothers for its seventh and eighth season, but midway through writing season eight, Jackson announced on Twitter that Adult Swim has decided not to move forward with season number eight. And uh, that's disappointing, but Adult Swim and HBO Max have both expressed interest in continuing the Venture Brothers story, whatever that means. 
I'm kind of hoping this will turn into like a James Gunn getting fired from Guardians of the Galaxy 3 situation where the cancellation benefits the show in the long run. I think the best case scenario is if they put all the older episodes on HBO Max and it gets a renewed interest and a new audience, sort of like how Community and Cobra Kai got a new audience on Netflix, and maybe they'll make new episodes. Currently, all of Venture Brothers is on Hulu, uh, but I can't think of a single person who has discovered a new show using the Hulu user interface. Ugh. And hey, maybe it'll give them more creative freedom. Uh, the cancellation definitely pushed me to make this video, and no, I am not invested in this show just because Jackson Public liked my blue Morpho outfit on Twitter. I don't know what's next for the Venture Brothers, but what I do know is I'm excited to go on their next adventure on- Gage, wrap it up! It's supper time! Mom, I was just about to wrap up. I had like 30 seconds left. Go outside and play with your friends! I'm 32. I don't go outside and play. Plus, I'm pretty sure there's a pandemic going on. Well, make sure to wash your hands after your YouTube. All right, fine. I hope you enjoyed me rambling about one of my favorite shows. If you like the show or are interested in the show, I implore you to watch it on Hulu, maybe even HBO Max in the future. And that's Venture Brothers. You want to do the thing? Hmm? You know, the... Uh... Oh, uh, sure. All right, I'll let you pocket your phone. And, uh, Go, Go Team, team venture. venture! Adventure, brother! Nope, not me. I have to move. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please like, comment, and subscribe. I'm building up those subscribers, baby. Hey, you want to help out? Be an early adapter? Hey. And I want to thank my patrons as well, Swim, Reynolds, Parker, and Nurchin. Those guys love them to death. They keep me going. Thank you for watching towards the end of the video. I know people no don't normally wait till the very, very end, but I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. Don't worry, I'll have a lot more stuff in the future. And we're going to have a great time here on this channel. All you need to do is subscribe, you silly goose. <laughs> uh, but seriously, please, please subscribe.